What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Stardew Valley. My name is Splattercat. Very happy to have you here today. Man, my wallet is empty as hell, isn't it? Look at my wallet right now. Right here inside this frame, there's supposed to be stacks of cash. And then it's just like... Pfft, wah, wah. Life imitates art. Life imitates art. I'll tell you that much. Art imitates life. or I don't even know how the saying goes. Either way, in the previous episode... Why is my fishing rod on the ground? In the previous episode, we had done some stuff. We had ran around and taken a look at the local stores and gotten a feel for what we needed to get done before we went any further into the game. And I think we had done a pretty good job with that. For right now, I think it's going to be the time to start hoeing on the farm. I didn't want to do that right there. Oh, man, that's going to bug the hell out of me. Okay, so we'll make a bigger one right here then. Can I walk across these plants, though? Like, is that an option? Oh, it looks like it might not be. I'll open that up and we'll make this a little bit larger. I changed my plan then. Never mind. Okay, we can walk across the plants. Hopefully it doesn't harm them or destroy them when I do this. I can still leave the spacing. It should still be perfectly fine. No, don't do not do that right now. There we go. Perfect. I think there's an option actually in here to where we can show the tool hit location. I'm going to try that out. There we go. So that'll make it a little bit easier so that I can target a little bit more efficiently. I've been meaning to turn that on in between episodes, and I highly recommend that you do if you have a lot of mishaps like I do. Like, I am constantly screwing up when it comes to some of my stuff, and so I figured I would bring it on up. Let's just plant some parsnips over here. Let's get this thing. I think I sh probably should have waited till tomorrow's harvest because now I'm going to have a chunk of my crop that, like, finishes before the other chunk of the crop. I'm not going to plant the potatoes until... All of this ground is cleared out, I think. These down here are just like random seeds and stuff. I don't know if I should... I don't know if I should segregate the plants from one another. Like, if I should have like potatoes over here. Or if I should have parsnips over here and then like rhubarb over here. I don't know if they're invasive or if they'll bother each other. If they can all be planted in confusion. I don't know if it's that complicated of a game where you can have like things next to each other without them choking each other out or like making the soil acidic in one way or another. I have no idea. I haven't played the game enough. I also have no idea what's going to be growing out of these mystery seeds over here that we've been planting. I've been picking them up out of the forest and just sort of holding on to them along the way and hoping that it works out. I think they will be useful. Let's chop down a couple of more trees. It's 650 right now. I don't think we have a ton of stuff to get done, but I do think there are things that we could accomplish, and I'm actually intrigued by the prospects of getting free tree seeds. Once we had leveled up a little bit, I don't know if there's like a formal level up system in the game or if it just kind of happens as you do activities, they said that we could now get seeds from trees that we had chopped, and that's something that I'm actually pretty excited about. That one's got my jimmies rustled in an oh-so-pleasant way. And so technically, I guess the jimmies are not rustled. The jimmies are being caressed. Ah, we can. We got maple seeds right there. Very, very cool stuff. You've never seen a maple seed before. It's like a seed. It looks like that, actually, right there. It's exactly it looks like a little polywog or something. And so what that does, we used to play with them when I was a kid. We had a maple tree in the front yard. They would fall off the tree, and they're like little whirly, but they're like helicopters. You drop them, and they spin. It makes it so the dispersal of the maple tree goes further out. It keeps the seeds aloft for a little bit. It doesn't use, like, fluffy, cottony goodness, though. Instead, this right here, it just does a little helicopter action, and that's pretty much it. It spins around on a little fin. Very, very cool stuff that nature has evolved for us to view and for us to have fun with and for us to observe and be like, that's so awesome, like, that that just happened all by its lonesome. Very, very cool stuff. And I don't think enough people take time to just sit there and marvel at, like, the simplicities of nature. I hike a lot. I go out in nature a lot. I was a geologist, and so a lot of my time spent in college doing studies was spent in the field. And you have loads and loads of time. And sometimes I wonder if we as modern human beings are missing out on something right there. Because in the field, there's nothing to do. And so I would just sit there and, like, smoke cigarettes, which I know it's bad for me. You don't need to tell me. But I only smoke cigarettes in the field or, you know, in social occasions with friends. I know it's bad for me. I know it's bad for me. I don't need... I don't need the lesson. It's all good. I understand. So do we have to plant the tree on soil? Or I think it's probably good to be renewable about this in one way or another. Or what a lot of people do with their farms is they'll plant trees along the periphery of it so that it'll mark the actual property line. Or they'll plant hedges the exact same way. You see it a lot. You see it more commonly in Europe. They don't do it a whole lot in the United States. Usually they just use fencing here. But... That's how a lot of people would mark their, their property lines. But anyways, what I was saying here is that I don't know if we as humans a lot of the time in like modern society, I'm a city kid, and so it's very, very easy to miss out on simple stuff like that. Like just taking a look at the way the little whirly bird seed works from a maple tree. You don't have a lot of time when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Like there's no video games or handhelds or anything like that. You're just in nature. And so being in nature, we got driftwood. Okay. 
It done drifted into our possession. I'll probably get rid of some of this sap. I don't think we're going to need all of it. So let's throw that in there. But that does raise an interesting point where I hadn't really... My earnings are 201G and my total funds are... I think, like, fishing is probably going to be the best way to solidify our wallet, by the way. We hadn't really talked about it a whole lot. But we've got wood in here. We've got driftwood. Let's drop some of these little goodies in here for later. I don't know. I'll probably give a sunfish or something. I don't know what I should give to somebody. It's going to be somebody's birthday pretty soon, and I don't know what I should give to them. Hadn't really decided yet. We can make torches. we got wild seeds right there. And so it takes a leek, a daffodil, wild horseradish, and a dandelion. It's never good when your seed packet needs to take a leek. you got to find a bat. That'll take a maple seed, an acorn, and a pine cone. Okay, so that'll give us a little bit of energy in case we're having like a hard work day. That's not going to be something that we want to stock. It's not going to be something that I think we want to make a ton of because I think it's going to be a little bit expensive in order to craft that. But it's looking pretty good and we're out of energy for the day. So let's go ahead and clock out for the night. I'm not going to carry... My fishing rod is gone again. The story of my life. That's the story of my life. Oh... That's the story of my life. Oh, it's inside of there. Okay, so we got some extra seeds and stuff. I kind of want to wait until the field is cleared out a little bit more before I spend more time just kind of making this field right here. I... Oh, it's sweat. I was going to say, what's coming? If you look right there, there's a little bit of water. What is that? Is that an owl? Woo-hoo! We had owls where I lived growing up. Big old barn owls. Big bastards. Probably two, three feet tall. I mean, not three feet. That might be an overestimation. But yeah, definitely between a foot and a hat to two feet tall. Big guys. He used to sit outside my window at night. There's a tree in my front yard when I was living with my parents. And he live outside my window. Woo! Woo! It used to be kind of annoying. But now I live way deeper in the city. And so I don't really hear that anymore. Oh, look at that. We got our parsnips grown in. Hey! We pull that thing out of there. Hell yeah. Pull that thing out of there Mario 2 style. Nice. And it doesn't really cost us energy to do that, so that's pretty cool. These are parsnips right here. It looks like we don't get parsnip seeds back. So, we're going to have to figure out a way where we can earn... Yeah, that's a little disappointing. It's okay. It's not, like, super disappointing, but I was hoping I would get seeds out. That means that we actually have a little bit of financial planning to do as well when it comes to some of our little enterprises here. Let's go fill up the water tank before I forget about it, because I'm the kind of person where I will need to do something with this and I'll forget about it until later and then we'll be sitting here and I'll have stuff I need to get done and I'll just feel like an idiot. Check the mail. To our valued Joja Mart customers, our team members have removed the landslide caused by our drilling operation near the mountain lake. I'd like to remind you that our drilling operation is entirely legal pursuant to initiative L61091 Joja Co amendment. Wait, if you put forward the initiative, how is that if you make the initiatives and the laws who watches the watchman here? Responsible stewardship of the local environment is our top priority. We apologize for any inconvenience this accident may have caused. As always, we value your continued support and patronage. Morris, Joja Customer Satisfaction Representative. Eh, it's all too clear what's happening here. Let's go ahead and pull some stones out of the earth real fast. And then maybe clear that out. Get rid of this guy. This big stump over here is going to take a little bit more work, which is a tad concerning, but... I think it'll be okay. I don't know if I want to chop any more maple trees. I was hoping we could go find some fruit trees, though. Something that would maybe give us, like, a cherry seed or, like, an apple seed or something along those lines so that we've got a tree-producing advancement. As you gain experience, you'll discover new crafting recipes to increase profit and make your life easier. A scarecrow, for example, will prevent crows from snacking on your precious crops. So if we reach farming one, we'll be able to craft that. Other things that we have, we have animals. Robin, the local carpenter, lives north of town. In exchange for raw materials and money, she can construct new buildings on your farm. You'll need her to build a coop or a barn so that you can raise animals. Oh, that's pretty sweet. And then on this side, getting started. If you want to become a farmer, oh, we did our first harvest, so we get paid $100. Nice. And then we haven't finished that yet, but I'm sure we'll find all the extra people in town before anything else goes wrong. Let's walk on down the road. We got some things we need to take care of before too long. It takes us 10,000 gold, though, in order to open up a new part in here, so I think I'm going to go fish first. The fish sell for a decent profit, and I think that if we can get two or three fish before the shops open, we'll be able to make some more money. I would like to get our planting done. I don't think we can chop trees down in the middle of the city, and that'd be kind of a dick move anyways. There's a big debacle where I lived one time where, as a senior prank, the seniors chopped down a tree that was on campus for another school. There's like five high schools in the city where I live. 
And so one high school and another one, they have a rivalry. And so students, without thinking, came and chopped down a tree and didn't realize it was a memorial tree for a student who had died. They, it was poorly thought out. It was a bad plan. So anyways, we got driftwood right there. I don't know if that's going to be useful, but we'll hold on to it. Might be, I don't know, maybe we can whittle it or something later on. Driftwood is nice like that. I had a whittling set that my uncle got me when I was a kid. It was kind of a, a hooked blade, kind of a talon-like blade that he got me with a whetstone. My uncle was always getting cool gifts like that. My uncle was a bit of a bohemian. And so anyways, he got me a whittling set, which came with a whetstone and kind of like a long blade that was kind of curved so that you could put your thumb on the back. Oh, I missed that one, sorry. I was making motions with my hand to describe how the blade looked for... Some idiotic reason. Anyways, I whittled a little while when I was a kid. I whittled on stuff. It was fun. Wasn't any good at it. But it was a cool way to pass time back in those days when we had television. You couldn't, we didn't have internet yet. So you sit around, you could whittle. Maybe your mom like grounded you or something and you couldn't play video games or whatever. Maybe you just didn't feel like playing video games. You could whittle. We got some green algae. Okay. It's really slimy, but it gives us energy. Huh. Okay, it raised our meter a little bit. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Let's continue fishing for a little while. We got nothing to do today. I feel like relaxing and hanging out. But yeah, it's just a long curved blade, but it's got a flat on the back of the blade so that you can put your thumb on it without, like, putting too much pressure on your thumb and making it uncomfortable. Kind of a cool little object. I don't know what happened to it. Like, I legitimately have no clue what happened to it. There we go. I'm starting to get the hang of it now. Starting to get the hang of the fishing. I think it's just practice makes perfect. The previous episode, it had frustrated me a little bit, and I was ex I was a little bit exasperated at the fact that I was having so much trouble pulling fish out of the ocean here, or out of the river, or whatever you want to call it. A little bit of light clicking involved. You definitely don't want to hold the key down, or you don't want to hold the mouse click down. Instead, what you want to do, I think, is you kind of just want to fan it with your finger a little bit. And sometimes the fish is going to move around a whole bunch, and there's not going to be much you can do about it. I wish somebody would make a fishing... I loved the fishing mini game in Ocarina of Time. I played the hell out of it. I played it so much. I wish somebody would make a game like that that was, like, arcadey and simple, but at the same time... You still got to like look underneath the water and see fish. I like aquariums and stuff like that too. I like the I like the grace of like fish and animals like that. We got a new record right here. That's a record setting sunfish right there. How badass is that? I'm gonna throw away these stones because I don't think I'm gonna need them. Let's go to the store. We'll sell off some of our wares. We'll make a little bit of money today. We'll profit a tiny bit from the labors of our morning. Catching three fish in a morning is not at all bad. I've had worse mornings and I've had better mornings. But we got two smallmouth bass and a sunfish. With our morning spent, our two sunfish, so four fish in about three hours of fishing. That's a pretty productive day as far as fishing goes. It kind of depends on how stacked the waters are, I guess. Alex, so hey, you're the new guy, huh? Cool. So it appears as though he enjoys to throw the pig skin around a little bit. Is there anybody in the trailer right now? Why is there a magic potion sitting right there? I'm like, that's not a magic potion. That's my Hennessy. Each day is just the same as the last. If only I'd been born rich. A caveat. Yes, you started out behind the finish line. But sitting around all day thinking about how poor you are is definitely not going to make you productive either. So, you know, get on your feet. Get out there. Try something. Take on a hobby. Fiddle around with something a little while. It's never good for the spirit to be sitting around doing nothing all day every day. I think some of the times where I was the most depressed I ever was, when I think about it, is like on the summer in between college semesters. We have like three months off and nothing to do. And like I wouldn't get a job or whatever. I just started fiddling with stuff or playing video games, but... Sometimes you gotta get out. Oh, we got 37 for that sunfish right there. Hell yeah, making money. And then we made 100 bucks off those that we sold right there. So good stuff. Little bit of cash that we can repurpose to expand the amount of products that we can offer on our farm. I'm hoping that if we can hustle around here enough, I think it'll pick up as we spend our time. But yeah, when I was sitting around doing nothing all day every day, just playing Xbox or whatever for 90 days straight, staying up all night, sleeping all day, that was probably the most down that I ever was. I'll be honest, ever since I started up YouTube as a hobby... It's nice to have something to fill the time. Like, there's always something to work on now. Now that this has blown up so large and gotten to where it is, there's always something to fiddle around with, and it, it makes me feel a little bit better. It really does. I'm in the market for a delicious parsnip. I would be so happy if somebody came and delivered one to me. Yeah, Pam, I don't know what these are going to sell for, but Pam was over in the trailer. So let's go help her out real fast. People that do pixel art gaming, why is it, I've noticed this, why does it always seem like you're moving slower when you're moving diagonal? There's a logical reason for this, probably a mathematical one. Ah, she left, shit. Where'd she go? Pam! 
Damn it, Pam. Where's she running off to? Oh, man. I can tell I'm be running down Pam all day. Who's this guy? Oh, this is the doctor. This is Harvey. Well, let's sell everything but one parsnip for right now. What do these sell for? Oh, you sold the whole stack? How do I sell a single? Oh, no. Buyback button. Where art thou? Shit. Well, there goes that quest. I don't know what the... Looks like they sell for quite a bit. So 12, it was at what, 420? So it looks like they sell for like 30-ish in there somewhere. Let's go ahead and spend a little bit of money so that we can make some more money. I will probably grab a few more potato seeds as well while we're in the neighborhood. Perfect. I don't know if anybody wants driftwood or anything. Did I talk to her yet? I think I did. Yeah. It's Friday. Oh, yeah. Friday. Friday. Got a hoe down on Friday. I got a friend on my Facebook who posts that every Friday. It's like a gimmick for me and all the people I went to high school with. He posts it every Friday. That video's like, it's Friday time. Gets like 150 likes on it every time he does it. Everybody gets all amped on it, turning up hella loud with the subwoofers. Friday, Friday. I know it's a bad song, but it's a tradition now. He posts it every Friday, and then we all get amped about it every single Friday. So this is where our parsnips were at. Let's go ahead and put some seed to soil here. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, that'll be good. That's looking pretty, pretty on and popping. Let's break out the watering can real fast and make sure that these are properly hydrated. As with human beings, got to keep those plants fed. Got to keep them watered. And then we'll take our hoe here. Perfect. Spend a day with our hoe. For show. And then I'll probably just plant a big old field of parsnips over here so we start turning around some real cash. It looks like I need one, two, three, four more parsnips in order to keep that nice and even. Let's go buy four more parsnips before they close at the store. And unfortunately, the expiration date on that, two days. So we, we may fail that one. Pam may be a little bit upset. Then again, I wasn't really planning to sell the entire stack by clicking once, so it happened. It happened. It was a mistake that we're going to make one time, but from now on, I promise, Nerdcastle, I'm not going to screw up like that anymore. I give you my word. The quality of the word, questionable. The durability of the word, up for debate. But there it is. I'm going to try not to screw that up anymore. Four more of these little guys. And then maybe a few more of those too. A little expensive, but I'm trying to go all in right now when we plant. I'm trying to make sure that our next harvest is really, really fruitful and that we earn a decent amount of cash from it. I think this is going to be one of those games where it starts out and, oh god, my headphones have betrayed me. They're falling off my head right now. I felt them sliding backwards suspiciously and I was like, headphones, I'm on to you. Don't do it. Don't do it, headphones. So anyways... I think this is one of those games that's going to accelerate very, very rapidly. Like, you start out broke and unable to provide for yourself. And then as the game goes along, I think it's going to it's gonna speed up nicely. So there it is. We've planted our next round of parsnips. That should provide us with, it looks like we're going 6 by 3 on there. So we got 18 plants. 18 plants at like 35 a pop. I think we're going to make a pretty decent amount of cash. I didn't really run the math in my head, but it works for right now. Let's get these taters all nice and settled. Come on, taters. Settle. I can't tell if it put a tater right there, but I'm hoping that it did. I'm hoping that we are well and properly tatered. And then we'll get a little infusion of cash from right there. And obviously, we can always just go fishing if we really, really, really need to earn some money. Perfect. All taken care of. I'm going to fill up the watering can, and then with the rest of the day, we got about half energy left. I'll probably work on felling a few more trees. In all honesty, if we knock this guy out right here, I think it's worth investigating on the east side of the town, but I'm going to do that tomorrow. That's not going to be a task for today. I think it's a little bit late in the day. I'll worry about it once we get there. I do want to make sure that I'm continuing to stump over on this side. The ulterior motive here that I'm trying to work with, the ulterior motive, is that once I get these trees cleared, I'm going to try and make a second little corral down here. How I'd like to have it eventually is I'd like to have it so that we have specific crops coming from specific fields. And then I'll put a little signboard up in front of each one because I'm assuming anyways that for most crafting games there's some kind of signboard. Just to remind myself what's growing in each spot. 
kill that energy off. I may go back to the bar tonight, too, just to see if there's any new people hanging around. Was it somebody's birthday today? Did I mess that up? Did I need to say happy birthday to somebody? I think I did. I think it was, like, the mayor's birthday or something. Hmm. Let's go back to town real fast and see if we can track down the mayor. And if we can tell the mayor happy birthday... Give him some driftwood or something for his birthday. I don't know. It sounds like a shitty present to me. But who knows what people like in this town? They could like anything. They live in Pelican Town, so... Worst, worst case scenario, we could, I guess, give somebody a pelican. And they could be thematic and fit in with everything else. Yeah, mathematically, I'm sure there's a reason why it feels like you're moving slower when you go diagonally. It would feel like you would be moving faster, though, because technically you're moving two squares in the same amount of time. If you wanted to break it down like that, I don't know. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. There's the mayor right there. Good evening, Figgle Farmer. I'm glad to see you relaxing at the saloon. It's good for you to take a break now and then. Your grandfather always worked himself too hard. I'll have an extra beer in his honor tonight. There you go. Beer up, man. Beer up. Ah, Mayor Lewis told me you just arrived. I'm Marnie. Okay, so we got a new individual right there. A couple of people hanging out on this side, just chilling, having a good time. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Leia, I like her hairstyle. I like her smile, too. Hey, Gus. Give me another pint of your strongest. Pam seems to have problems. We may want to help Pam out a little bit. Make her feel a little bit better. Artisan goods. Drink in moderation. Been working hard all week. I deserve a little relaxation on a Friday night. So it looks like this is kind of the place to be on a Friday night. This is where everybody's hanging out. Having a good time. I don't think I've talked to all the adolescents yet. Sam, if I give the cue ball a bit of a topspin, maybe I could, uh... Should I let Sam win for once? Nah. Sometimes I totally lose track of time. I have the same issue. A Joja Cola for 75G. That's a lot of money. I don't know if I'm flush with cash like that. Got a big old wooden bear. Nothing says Americana like a big old wooden bear everywhere. Big old carved wooden bear. You got a place called Black Bear Diner out here. It's always got all kinds of carved bears and shit. It's a cool place. I like going there. They got rid of a bunch of the stuff on the menu, though, that I liked, and so I don't go there anymore. I used to go there probably once a week. I really enjoy eating out. And I know... Go ahead and snicker about the innuendo, but anyways, I enjoy eating at restaurants. It's a thing that I really, really enjoy. My family never did that when I was growing up. Eating at restaurants was not a thing that typically happened very often. And so... I enjoy doing it. I don't know. I don't have kids or responsibilities or anything like that. And so I tend to have a little bit of extra discretionary income. And so some people say that I squander it. But I enjoy my evenings out. Just kind of hanging, talking with the wait staff. They all know me. There's a lot of local diners here that are run by families that have lived in the town for 100 years. That You know, they're, they're like my family. They've been around for a long time. And we all know each other. And my mom used to work for them and stuff like that. And so it's fun to go in. It's kind of like a cheers like... I want to go where everybody knows your name. It's like one of those type situations. And so it's kind of a social thing, too. Oh, if I can get you up to here, we can get some treasure, though. I kind of want that treasure. Yeah, I got some treasure now. Got that pleasure. I think the longer you leave it on the line, too, the more feisty it gets. I don't know what we just pulled out of the water, but I think it's going to be awesome. We got a bream. And then we also got a treasure chest, which had... Bait. Okay, so it causes fish to bite faster. You got to attach it to a fishing rod, though, and a little bit of coal. So it looks like you catch different fish depending on the time of day. I know what a bream is. I've seen those around. Let's fish one or two more times, and then I'll call it a day. I do enjoy the fishing mini game, and it's actually the only thing that's keeping us financed right now. We're a little bit broke. We got to get some cash so that we can actually earn. And then we'll sleep. And in the next episode tomorrow, we'll go in. And we'll try to take a look at what's on the east side of town. We'll have a look around. And then maybe we'll go down into the sewer, too, just to see what happens. Ooh, he came out swinging. Okay, I like this fish. He's feisty. And again, I'd be feisty if somebody lodged a big hunk of spiky metal in my mouth, too. Looks like we got a smallmouth bass. That's good, because those things sell. Give him one more cast, and I'll do my outro here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here. The Nerd Castle to play Stardew Valley. As always, it is an absolute pleasure and a privilege to get to play this game with all of you. Like, seriously... It's so awesome that every day I get to hang out with all of you and play video games for a living. And seriously, it's been the time of my life so far. And I owe all of you for that. And I don't think that I appropriately express my appreciation enough. So thank you very much. I will see you all later. Hi to everybody. Bye.